Hi there, and uh, let's get right to it. Today we're talking about lookup tables and how we can apply them inside of the color page. To clarify what we're talking about first, a lookup table is a color conversion matrix. In it, you assign a set of values for incoming RGB data, which will then be calibrated and output according to these values. So it's kind of like a preset grade, except presets tend to rely on algorithms. It's something times something else, or divided, or subtracted, etc. LUTs work directly with chart conversion, so every pixel of every value is directly translated to a different color. Because of this, LUTs tend to contain a lot of information, especially 3D LUTs, which have a much wider color range and contain both luma and chroma information. Originally, LUTs were designed for practical purposes. So a viewing LUT would allow you to make log footage look like Rec. 709 footage so you had a better representation of what your final film would look like. Calibration LUTs are used to calibrate monitor displays. You have film emulation LUTs that mimic the look of stock film, so you can see how your project will look like when it's printed on film stock before the actual printing is done. In most of these cases, the LUT is temporary and is removed before the grading begins and definitely before it's rendered out. More recently, LUTs have been employed for creative purposes. So you have a transform LUT, which is what we would mostly associate with presets. It's really good for rotating between different grades to come up with ideas for the final look, or it could just be used for the final product for stylization of the footage. LUTs can be generated inside of DaVinci Resolve, where you can import and export your own from the gallery window. They can be purchased or shared online between companies or colorists. There is some debate as to the use of LUTs for creative purposes. Uh, the reason why they're a bit controversial is because in order for a LUT to be 100% precise or used correctly, the input or the camera and codec that the footage was captured on has to match exactly to the conditions in which the LUT was created. Likewise, the output has to match 100% as well. So that's your monitor and also your final project delivery. This is why LUTs are mainly used in-house at post-production houses or by editors or colorists working on their own stations. It's because you know exactly what equipment you're working with and what your output monitor is. If you're using someone else's LUTs and they're using different equipment from you, then you're going to end up with a slightly different look. And that's probably not what most of us want. So let's direct our attention to DaVinci Resolve specifically. First of all, you can only apply LUTs to media that is either log or is using log debayering. So it is going to start off looking a bit flat. You can then right click on a node and choose from one of the LUT options. One dimensional LUTs tend to affect each color channel separately to produce the output. So we're looking at a limit of 768 values. It's a little bit more rudimentary than the 3D LUT, which treats color channels interactively, and instead of adding the values of 256 per channel, it multiplies them, meaning that you have millions of values. There's some LUTs that come with DaVinci Resolve, and there's others that you can add from third parties. So I believe the film looks comes with DaVinci, and I'm able to navigate through different film emulations. I've got Fujifilm, I've got Kodak, got a few examples of Sony outputs, Nikon. A very simple LUT to apply would be to convert your log footage to Rec. 709, but you do have to make sure that the input configuration matches your own video input. You can only apply one LUT to a node at a time, so if you want to add more than one, you'll have to create a serial node and add the LUT separately. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time.